Hi, Dr. David DeRose here. It's good to have you with me again for day eight of 30 Days to Natural Diabetes and High Blood Pressure Control. Today's challenge, seek low sodium options. I still remember it. Sitting there at the dinner table in the DeRose household, there was a family member who sometimes would come by and visit and it would bother my parents. It seemed like it was bothering them because they'd often comment about his behavior. One of his habits was before he even took a bite, he'd grab that salt shaker and start dumping it on the food. He hadn't even tasted it. Are you a compulsive salter of your food? Well, most people today have, have heard some of the information about sodium and they're not using the salt shaker all that much. But we've still got a huge problem in our country. And if you've got high blood pressure or diabetes, part of your problems may go no further, I don't want to say than the salt shaker, but than the salt. The reason I don't want to single out the salt shaker is most of us are really not getting all that much salt at the table. But we're getting lots of salt in processed foods and in restaurant foods. And it's driving our blood pressure, and it's increasing our risk of diabetic complications. True story. I was speaking uh, at a venue, and someone came up to me. They said, Dr. DeRose, we've read your book. We've read 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure Control. And this particular individual told me, he said, I have dropped my blood pressure. And, and I, as I recall, the figure was something like 50 points. He was off his blood pressure medications. And I said, well, what in the book caused a change in your lifestyle. He said one of the things was the material about sodium. He said he'd been eating out a lot and he stopped that frequent restaurant food fair. And that, along with exercise, were the two keys that really brought his blood pressure down. You say, what about diabetes? If you have diabetes, having higher blood pressure than you need is increasing your risk of diabetic complications. So it really behooves all of us to look seriously at our sodium consumption. Now, remember, in this series, I'm not playing doctor for you, okay? I, I'm not, by way of this video, taking charge of your medical care. And definitely, if you have any questions about the safety of sodium restriction, then you talk with your provider. If you're on a diuretic, if you're taking a water pill, you do need to be careful that you don't cut back your salt too much. That means if you're taking furosemide or Lasix, if you're taking hydrochlorothiazide, uh, if you're taking chlorothalidone, these are some common diuretics. You want to talk with your doctor, your healthcare provider, before you just get so excited about choosing low sodium options. But let me come back to the big picture because my challenge is for you to look at ways to decrease your sodium unless there's a reason why you shouldn't from a medical standpoint. Here's where I'm going with all this. I'm looking at chapter 5 in our book. It's page 106 if you've got the book. We've got a graphic there from the New England Journal of Medicine, one of the most prestigious medical journals in the world. They looked at what would happen if the average American just decreased his or her salt consumption by about 30%. So the average American today, uh, taking in about a teaspoon and a half of, of salt, if they were to cut that back to a teaspoon, what would happen? I'm looking at the graphic. Coronary heart disease deaths, based on this advanced statistical modeling, they would drop from somewhere around 180,000 a year in the U.S. down to somewhere around 120,000. We're talking about 60,000 lives saved just by cutting back a little bit on the salt. Then you look at stroke. Amazing. About 100,000 deaths per year, cutting that down to somewhere around 60,000 deaths per year. About a 40,000 decrease in lives saved, 40,000 lives saved by simply cutting down on sodium. How do you do it? You simply choose lower sodium foods. That's my challenge today. And let me give you a practical pointer. We talk about this in the book. I'll just give it to you, very simple. You look at the calories in the food item and you look at the milligrams of sodium. So if there's 200 calories per serving, you look then and compare the milligrams of sodium 
in that serving with the number of calories. If it's less than the calories, if the milligrams of sodium are less than the number of calories, that is a relatively low sodium choice. So again, 200 calorie food option, if it's got 120 milligrams of sodium in it, that's a relatively low sodium choice. If it's 150 calories in a serving and it's got 300 milligrams of sodium, that's about twice as many milligrams of sodium per calorie. That would be, of course, a higher sodium option. So eat less in restaurants, or if you eat in restaurants, get their ingredient lists and choose low sodium options. Watch those processed foods, watch things in boxes and crinkly bags, and you are on your way to better blood pressure and better diabetes, at least decreasing your risk of complications by following the simple principle. That's day eight. We'll be back with more tomorrow.